Hello everyone and welcome to our coverage of the fastest runs from today's pro stage at the EWS Whistler here at Crankworks Whistler. Joining me today is Rory Cunningham. Rory, not a bad spot. Oh, it's such a good spot, Rick. Whistler, love coming here, hate leaving. Here we go then, third fastest in the pro women's field today, Flo Espinier with a 10.21.39. Flo riding for the Orbea Fox Enduro team, the Chilean burst on the international enduro racing scene back in 2018. Just catching the rider in front of her there as well. Yeah, Flo won the Pink Bike Academy last year. A lot of that was based out here, so she'll be well used to these conditions. Yeah, well, that's it. She is based out here, down to the line. Andrea Lanfia in the dough then with a 10 16.1. Rocky Mountain Race faces ALN. Sending that rock drop on the 11.99. And off the big wooden booter. Yeah, the 11.99, a tribute to uh, Canada's own Stevie Smith and uh, representing the first portion of uh, the pro stage today. ALN still in the hunt for that debut victory and what a result it would be if it could come here in Canada. Yeah, it would be the best place to do it and she was super strong today. Down the line in 10.16. Right, Harriet Harndon then, the fastest woman on stage today with a 10.12.2. Uh, she openly admits that she's uh, not a big fan of the big jumps here in Whistler Bike Park, but what she is very, very good at is going very, very fast. Yeah, I was up there in the 1199 section this morning, Rick. She spent a lot of time trying to figure out if she was going to jump that big wooden step down, ended up not opting not to do it, but it just shows you how much, how strong she is, the, the climb after it. She was still the fastest in that top section. Yeah, there was a big, bit of a climb on this one, Harriet. Over that drop, straight down. Yeah, that custom coloured trek as well that uh, she actually designed herself, so well happy with that. Go just around that uh, wooden drop as well. And, I mean, you'd probably lose at least five, possibly seven seconds on that one. That big step up as well, you have to roll it and you can see she's really having to get on the pedals and this is that climb I was talking about. And this is where she will have put down those watts. Harndon, of course, multiple XC wins, multiple cross champion as well and just absolutely powering up this one. Yeah, and racing the World Championships cross country in Leger in a few weeks time. A master of all disciplines, yeah. nearly. Isabel Cordurier, she is racing this weekend, although she's still recovering from that foot injury she sustained at EWS E Valberg. I just wonder if Harndon will see this one as a chance to pull back some points in the series leader. Yeah, this was a good start, wasn't it? Super physical stage, there's some really tough technical ones out there tomorrow. But she has to do this again, so she'll be really confident she can back this stage up with another victory on it tomorrow. Back into the descending then. Some typical Whistler bike park here. Albeit not some North Shore skinnies, but some of these wooden bridges just link the trail together. A few little gaps, drops, berms in here. You really have to link it all together to find that flow. This trail actually uh, running fantastically this stage, I should say. Um, we had a lot of rain over a couple of days. and I mean, temperatures last week were up in the 37 sort of range. And wow, straight round there for Harndon, not hanging around. But it really is actually optimal conditions in the bike park for a big race this weekend. Yeah, just that perfect amount of moisture in the dirt. You can see the light's a bit tricky in this early afternoon, quite dappled. There's some shadows, some light spots. So you really have to know what you're kind of jumping into if you're going into one of those darker sections. Is there anything they can do about that, Rory, in terms of goggle lenses or tints, or is it just having to memorise where you are on the stage? It's a combination of both. Really, riders will sometimes go for a, a tinted lens, maybe a blue lens um, in these sort of conditions, but it makes the dark spots darker and the light spots lighter, so it's not often that, the best yeah, thing. Hard and straight through there. You can, hear how, you can hear how hard she's working. Yeah, this section part, of the Garbanzo downhill race as well, and um, rocky, technical, just all these little kind of drops and, and steps just to sap that momentum, but she's linking it together here really, really well. We are in, I should point out, the mother of all bike parks here, Whistler Bike Park for Crankworks Whistler, and what is unique about these stages, they are there's so many trails in the bike park itself that the, the team here can really stitch them together. Look at the speed of Harndon through here. Yeah, high speed section, although it seems fast, this will actually be an amazing opportunity for the riders just to rest their hands, get a few breaths, and another little sprint here, but the hands will recover. And um, yeah, this was a, a long pro stage, you know, 10 minutes for the, for the women. There she is, hauling in the rider in front. Straight through those berms into monkey hands, really rocky, rough section to finish. 
Again, you can see the light and dark sections here. Camera almost just struggling. I was going to say how almost, bright it is. Almost dazzled by the camera here, and this is the final push to line up under this bridge. You can see the rider in front, which shows how fast she's been. Always a good sign. Melanie Pujan, their last year's champion, and there is Harnden just reining her in. Harnden over the line, fastest today with 10, 12.27. And in good fettle for tomorrow. I, I really wasn't expecting it, I have to say. <laughs> like, um, it was quite a messy run for me, so yeah, I just ended up trying to enjoy the bottom bit after a little bit of a messy start. It's definitely a confidence booster, um, and yeah, I love the trails we're racing tomorrow, so I'm really excited. Confirmation of those results then. Harnden first place by nearly four seconds. A healthy league going into the five stages tomorrow. Lamphy Nadeau though, Canada expects a big result from her. Flo Espinera, nine seconds back. Isabel Corduria, the winning champ in fourth. And you've got Astel, Miller, Karem, Barona, Morrison and Connolly. We've got the fastest pro men then. Probably a familiar trio to any regular EWS fans out there. Jack Moyer, the defending champ. Rory, he looks like a different rider compared to that we saw at the start of the year who was uh, struggling for bike time. Yeah, returning from that shoulder injury, I think just the extra few weeks on the bike will have helped him a lot and he's looking far more comfortable out there. Interesting, he's never raced an enduro here at Crankworx Whistler. Um, we, you know, we've had a couple of years hiatus from this venue and Jack's really come to prominence in enduro since then, but um, making good sense of this one. Yeah, some of the big steep shoots up there and that rocky fade into this big step down now, completely blind into the last minute. Whoa. Jack making short work of it. This step up here was a real pull and you can see how hard he had to get A real pull, it. yeah. If Jack's not putting any style on it, you know it's a pull. Now, there is a winner's um, banquet dinner here at Crankworx Whistler and I've been reliably informed that Jack's mechanic, Ben, really, really wants to go on it. So he's riding, <laughs> he's riding with a bit more added pressure. Yeah, into this climb now, Jack. I'd say one of the fittest riders, putting those long legs to good use and powering up this short, but really, really hard climb. Here we go. Duffman, loads of really, really big rock, big round rock slabs connected up by these little bridges and accuracy really, really is king. Yeah, a little double here onto that wooden bridge and you have to kind of duck around that tree. Really kind of tricky to link this together, especially in this light, but Jack, no problem to him. But look at the speed of Moyer down here. Yeah, Jack can turn on a sixpence, can't he? He's so good at the tight corners for a big guy. He seems to have got that canyon now set up how he liked it oh, as well. Oh, mistake. Just stops. Oh, that's a few seconds there. Opting to go round that big rock no. rather than over it, but that is interesting. Now that is interesting because was Moyer actually on for the win today then? Could be a pig with a different snout come this time tomorrow. Ben's dinner ticket hangs in the balance in this one. Look look at Whoa. how difficult the light is through there. Yeah, and there's some big steps in there that you can't really make out on camera. Into these corners, it makes it even harder to carry momentum through them. It's so easy to just grab the brakes and Whoa. Jesus wept. <laughs> <laughs> look at the speed of them through there. Important to remember as well, at the EWS, the racers only have one practice run as well. So that's all done from GoPro work and memory and linking these sections together in your head so that your body's ready for them whenever the bike arrives into them. Yeah, that's the infamous Ho Chi Minh section that we saw back there. Tree slalom almost, what do they call it, the Star Wars section. Into monkey hands then, you and got it gets. You gotta swing up onto this rock slab here, or not, and uh, <laughs> Jack firing down the middle of the rocks. Of course, a former downhiller by trade before he made the switch to the EWS full time. This place will suit him and he is definitely one of the riders to watch oh, for tomorrow. Scrubbing off the bridge and he goes double into the whoops. And then straight down to the finish line in the iconic Whistler Bike Park Village. There we go, over the line, Moyer with an 8.38. Let's go back to the top then, Richie Rude. The man with the yellow plate on as it stands, a series leader. And this really is a canvas in which he has painted some of his absolute masterpieces over the years. He's won by some big margins in Whistler. Choosing a right hand line there, you saw him cut quickly off the course, and another inside one there. Richie, I mean, some of the, the victories he's had there, I remember one, I think it was 2016, just absolutely smashing the top of the world stage, Klonbach. I think it was almost 20 seconds on whoever was in, in the hot seat at the time and you know he would love to back this up with a win. 
Second this fastest week. today, but we're seeing, we're really seeing a kind of mirror image of um, last year's championship and over this big drop. Whoa. And we're seeing a mirror image of last year in that Rude knows that he needs to be close to Melamed and Melamed knows he needs to be close to Rude. Yeah, you can just see him sitting down there taking a little breather before he drops back into the trees at that blind step down. Look at the light jumping up and over that rock slab and then into this right hander you've got to carry all that momentum into the climb here. He did actually say at the top as well that he thought he might have chosen the wrong lens of a clear lens but here we go. This is where Richie Rude does his work. Some of the best work that he does is up these climbs where he can just tap on the par, yeah, good. sniffing the front tyre. I was going to say good view of the front tyre there looks like, a, looks like an ass guy. But Richie, let's be honest, not short of horsepower, and he's made short work of that climb. I think I was <laughs> about a minute slower than that this morning. Yeah, I'd stop for a snack halfway up there, but Richie making little, little work of it. Yeah, linking it together really, really nice here. Richie, such a powerful rider, and you can see how close he's getting to the edge of those bridges. I think he's put that horn sign on the, or the horn sticker on his mudguard just so he can see it. Maybe to give, maybe to give him some encouragement up those climbs when he's looking over his front tyre so much. Look, look at the speed through here. Rude just absolutely demolishing this stage in Whistler. Into the Duffman section here, railing that left hander, and then this next one. Linking it together so good. Getting the feeling as well, this is a big race. We head to... Uh, we different headed... line to Jack here, up and over the rock oh, slab yeah. and roll in. Oh wow, completely different. Look at the speed out of it. Yeah, a little bit more complex on the way in, but we had the back fast to, on the way out. We had the back-to-back -back rounds on the US East Coast after this. Very much Richie Rude's home rounds. And if he could sneak a result over Melamed this weekend, it would set him up absolutely beautifully to leave this second block of racing with a handsome lead in the title race. Yeah, it seems like it's a two-horse race between him and Jesse. This is obviously Jesse's home patch and I'm sure Richie would love more than anything to get a victory here Whoa. and just to turn the knife that little bit more. Now, both Jesse and Richie, interestingly, running prototype Fox suspension. Really, really trick race spec stuff uh, with... Um, oh, let us watch him through the Ho Chi Minh section. I think the trees are jumping out of his way, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the bike can adjust its way down the course. You can also adjust it on the fly or so the, the rumours go and the speed he's travelling, I'd be, uh, be impressed if he had time to do anything. Yeah, I can imagine Richie doesn't think about that stuff too much. It'll be firm or extra firm <laughs> <laughs> only. Into monkey hands. Let's see what he does here. Now, is he going to go down low like Jack did or will he swing up to the right? Straight through the guts of it. <laughs> My, tie, my line was obviously a 2016 one. <laughs> <laughs> Commentator's curse. Richie Rude just absolutely blasting his way down this stage. Yeah. And into this little section, this little rhythm section before the drop. Yeah, a little fade off that and then Richie just hammering through the whoops. And then over the line, Richie Rude, 8 minutes 38 on the same second as Jack Moyer. Not the first time we've said that. And then here we are then, the fastest run from the day, Jesse Melamed with an 8.32. The man with the weight of a nation on his shoulders after one of the most important days in Canadian mountain bike history of recent times. And he absolutely turned up today, Rui, with the A game, didn't he? Yeah, a lot of pressure on Jesse this weekend and he certainly delivered today. This 11.99 section here, some big compressions into this steep shoot here. Brand new section as well, so... Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Getting a bit loose there, the crowd really appreciating that. A, a brand new section, freshly dug, this is the first time it's been, it's been raced in anger and changing and evolving all the time. Let's just watch Melamed through this big ticket section. I think he's on the ground more than... off the ground more than he was on it through that section there. Straight up. Oh. And easily straight back the, on the pedals as well. over the step up. You see Jesse not up to rest there, just sprinting into that next woods. And he just nails those little sections, doesn't he, where there's time available. Yeah, fully committed through there. Really, really impressive riding. Melamed now onto the bottom of this pretty horrible climb. And, I mean, what he lacks in size compared to Richie, he certainly makes up for in horsepower. And he is, he is one of the very, very fittest. He's the fittest he's ever been, really. Yeah, he's definitely in the form of his career at the moment, Rick. Now, he has won here at home in the past, and 
Getting a, getting a second bite of the cherry would do his championship hopes absolutely no harm at all. Into the Duffman section then. Yeah, you feel this is the best opportunity he has all year to get a win back on Richie. It's it's very much a two-horse race. There's not much separating oh. them, but it's it's advantage Richie coming into this event and Jesse, amazing opportunity to, to get back level and to take the series over to Burke. And it's not an easy one. It's not an easy one race at home. There is so much pressure. You've got relatives you haven't heard of in years coming out of the woodwork, and everybody's wishing you well. You can't move it's through not, the village for backslaps. Ireland, <laughs> <laughs> and here he comes then. Melamed on absolutely look at the speed of him through here. Yeah, oh, choosing a different lane to Richie. This is what we saw Jack do. Jesse negotiating that rock much cleaner. And didn't swing up to the left there either, did he? Yeah, but you saw the exit speed wasn't compromised, was it? You can hear how hard he's working. The Rocky Mountain Race Face team always relaxed, always having fun and Never more so than this weekend, which is impressive work from what is a race that must have a lot of pressure coming with it. Yeah, home race for the team, but they all delivered today. Remy had a really good result. Obviously, ALN second in the women's and Jesse winning the, the men's. It's a solid start for the team, hammering through this section. You can see those big drops I was telling you about, that little skinny wooden bridge, and then now the you're into more of a bike park section. The accuracy is unbelievable through there, and the Ho Chi Minh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Changing direction like a blue bottle in a greenhouse. <laughs> Straight down then, back in the village is in sight, but there's still a little couple of obstacles to negotiate. Yeah, you can just see him just taking a moment before he drops into this final monkey hand section. Is anybody going to do the line that you predicted? Yes! Yes, Jesse! Sick. Good lad. <laughs> I knew I was onto something five years ago. <laughs> Here he comes in. Fully yeah. committed through there. Oh. Really changeable conditions. We have seen the Weller play a big part, but the, the Whistler Bike Park looking an absolutely fine fettle ahead of this one. Off the drop, down over the rhythm section. Double, double through it as well. And you saw him get some pedals in. Straight over the line for an 832.1. Jesse Melamed recording an absolutely superb win. And not only is that a victory ahead of Richie, he put nearly six seconds into the Yeti rider. I wasn't like super confident on, let's say, winning that stage. Uh, I knew I could put down a good run if it was a little bit eased back. Like the bike park's so hard to race because it's just seen so much abuse. Everything's like blown out. And there's this little like silty powder that makes everything slippery. So I had a few like close moments, like near slide outs and I had to put my foot out. But as far as bike park race stages go, it was as good as I could have hoped for, so stoked to have a good stage to start the weekend, and yeah, looking most forward to tomorrow, so I'm, yeah, I'm stoked. I had just watched Finn do his race run before I went up, and I was like, that is, that's sick, and I felt a little bit like, I don't know if it was that I had to do the same, but I was like, it would be cool if I could also do that, so uh, I was just thinking about Finn and how he put it together under pressure. There we go then, what a weekend the Canadian riders are having. Melamed, Rude, Moyer, Matt Walker in fourth place with an absolutely stellar ride. Cole Lucas as well up in fifth. Remy Govan, another Canadian enjoying himself. Jack Menzies, Eddie Masters, Greg Callahan, and Christian Texter.